how do you calculate the ROAS of a subscription app's UA activity using just AppStore Connect data? That's the question we're gonna to answer today. Why might you wanna use AppStore Connect data to calculate ROAS or LTV, right? There's a couple of reasons. One, of course, the App Store Connect data is what reflects the uh, amount of dollars coming into your bank account, and that is that, and it is therefore your best source of truth. Uh, you know, number two is you may or may not have you may not always have the budget to afford SaaS tools that could be analytics tools or MMPs that can pro that are providing you additional more nuanced data. And even if those do provide data, those may not always match up exactly with App Store Connect, uh, which is your source of truth. And that's, that's one big reason why we calculate blended ROAS and blended, uh, blended LTV using App Store Connect data. Now, uh, in, a, in a previous video from some time ago, I had shown how to calculate LTV from OpDAO for a free-to-play app. And again, that methodology was very valid for free-to-play apps, but it just won't work for subscription apps because the economics of subscription apps have their own idiosyncrasies that result in particular challenges. Some of these challenges that make subscription apps economics very unique are, one, there's oftentimes a free trial period with zero monetization that you do need to model out. So you have to account for the first monetization event to be offset from the install by a three, seven or 14 day period. Number two is that there can be subscription plans, most frequently monthly and annual subscription plans. Number three is that unlike free to play games, the monetization frequencies can be discrete and there can be a cap on monetization. So monetization happens once a month or once a year, once a week. Not, and you know, unlike free-to-play games where they could happen much more often and there is a ceiling to the amount that a user can pay. And number four, of course, is that a lot of the revenue data that you get in iTunes Connect, the, let's say sales, proceeds and transactions are aggregated uh, across renewals and new users. So, there is no easy way to separate out just your new user revenue, just your, uh, just your returning user revenue uh, when you're looking at the sales and proceeds in iTunes, right? Uh, you do have to look at other sections, which I will point out in this video. So why is that important? Because in order to understand how your user acquisition is doing, you want to understand the health of your new users monetization and not renewing users. Right, or not all of your users. And it's very, very important to understand how only your new users are doing as separated out from your existing users. And given all of these very unique considerations of subscription apps, here's how we recommend approaching the analysis of LTV and ROAS for subscription apps. All right, now we are on Apps to Connect. And uh, I'm in under trends, I'm looking at the subscription section. As I had said, the problem with the sales metrics is that it doesn't break things out by renewals and new users. Uh, under the subscription section, you can break this out and it's unfortunately not very clearly labeled and that's what I'm gonna walk us through today, right? So here's the section. Typically activations refers to free trials. Uh, if you do not have a free trial, activations refers to the first purchase. Conversions to standard price refers to the, uh, a free trial becoming a paying user. And of course there are renewals, which are uh, overall renewals, renewals from grace period, renewals from billing retry. I'm gonna get into the details of that, but those are the three big categories of subscription events. The other important consideration is that you wanna take these events separately for the different plans you have. So for a monthly plan, annual plan, or a weekly plan, you want to have these be shown separately. Activations, renewals, and uh, conversions to standard price. Why is that? Because the monetization profile of these different plans is going to be very, very different, right? And uh, I'm going to show you examples from an actual app, which has been sort of anonymized just now. As you can see here, for, this is for a specific month that we took the number of monthly activations and the number of annual activations are so dramatically different. 
because clearly if for this particular app, way more users are opting for the annual plan. And uh, you know, the conversions to standard price obviously is also correspondingly different for all of the, for these folks. You can see here the renewals is flipped, but that is only because the annual plan is relatively new. Uh, and also because obviously there are more monthly users that have uh, been renewing you know, over the last 12 months, whereas the annual plan users that renew were just people who may have made the first purchase about a year ago, whereas the uh, monthly renewals are people who it renewed one month ago, two months ago, three months ago, five, four months ago, and so on and so forth. So the renewals obviously are much higher, right? So my broader point here being, you do want to account for your monthly and annual subscriptions separately because as you can see, the number and the price point of each of these is very, very different. Great. So you get you get these numbers for uh, the time period you want to look at. In this case, I've taken for an entire month. This was November 2022, a month before I'm recording. Uh, and I have these numbers over here. And uh, once you have the monthly and annual plan numbers, you want to calculate the gross revenue from new users, which is and gross revenue from renewals, right? So don't worry so much about activations, which are the free trials, uh, but you want to calculate the gross revenue from new users and renewals. The other important considerations when you're looking at activations and conversions to standard price is that you have to take a seven day or a 14 day or three day offset when you're looking at conversions to standard price. That's because, let's just say, again, this is for November 2022. Let's assume you are taking this data for, uh, you know, the activations are for all November, November 1 to 30. The spend is from November 1 to 30, and activations happen typically within the first 24 hours. So the spend and activations are from November 1 to 30. For a user that installs, that watches an ad on November 30 and installs on November 30, the conversion to standard price is going to happen on uh, December 6th, right? which is seven days down the line. right? So it's very important to keep that in mind. And similarly, for somebody who starts on November 1st, the first, the first payment happens on November 8th. Right? So it's important to take a seven-day offset. So what that means is if you're looking at this one, uh, this for the, the activations for the time period November 1 to 30, your conversions to standard price should be from November 8 to December 6, right? So it's important to take different time frames for this. Uh, renewals, you want to take it for the same uh, time frame that you're taking the conversions to standard price. So typically, I would recommend taking the same time frame just so you're able to do an Apple Startups comparison when you're looking at new users and returning users, right? So this is new users and this is returning users. Right, so this is an important breakdown that you want to be making. Right, so now that you have this, you're calculating the gross revenue from new users. You're saying new users uh, monthly multiplied by monthly price, new users uh, annual multiplied by annual price, and that gives you the gross revenue. Same, same with renewals. Renewals uh, monthly multiplied by monthly price, renewals uh, annual, uh, annual uh, multiplied by annual price. Again, you may have multiple monthly plans. You may have done different AD tests. That does complicated. That uh, you, you may have different prices for different, uh, you know, geos. You have done different tests. That does complicate the situation a little bit. For the purpose of this analysis, I have not accounting for the for those differences. You could certainly break this down by very different uh, price points, very different plans that you do have. For the sake of simplicity, I've just taken these two. Right. So once you have the gross use, gross revenue, you have to deduct Apple's tax, and that again is you're cutting, you're deducting thirty percent, and uh, for, from both use, new users and renewals. Again, you may want to be uh, again. This is a simplified model uh, for users that are coming in year two. Uh, the Apple's cut is obviously fifteen percent. You could certainly simplify this. You could say, uh, look for. Uh, Annual subscribers, it's going to be 85%. Uh, and monthly subscribers, it's going to be 70%. In this case, I've, for the sake of simplicity, taken just everything to be 0.7. Again, you can make this model more uh, nuanced if you would like to see, uh, like to do that. Right? 
great. So now you have net revenue from new users, net revenue from renewals. You know what percentage of your revenue comes from new users, what percentage comes from re renewals, which is again, a good measure of your business's health, good measure of your business's uh, acquisition. Uh, in this case, what you also do is you add up your new user uh, revenue and re re returning user revenue. You have the net proceeds from new users only. And this is just for month one. This is only in the first transaction. This is the amount you're making. As the users renew, you can certainly account for that. But this is your first transaction ROAS that you, if you divide it by cost, you get the first transaction ROAS, right? And that's how you calculate ROAS for your subscription app using iTunes data. I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you liked it or if you have questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching.